Ahang Bhante, Ti Saranena Saha Pancha Silani Yachami, Tutiampi, Ahang Bhante, Ti Saranena Saha Pancha Silani Yachami, Tatiampi, Ahang Bhante, Ti Saranena Saha Pancha Silani Yachami, Namutasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambudhasa. 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 Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Buddhang saranang gachami. Buddhang saranang gachami. Dhammang saranang gachami. Dhammang saranang gachami. Sanghang saranang gachami. Sanghang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Tutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Di saranaga menang ni titang. Ama pante. Pana tipata vira manisika padang samadiyami. Pana tipata vira manisika padang samadiyami. Adina dana vira manisika padang samadiyami. Adina dana vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Kami su mi chahachara vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Kami su mi chahachara vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Musawada vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Musawada vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Sura meraya manjapa madakthana vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Sura meraya manjapa madakthana vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Imani pancha sikha padani silena sugating yanti silena bhoga sampada silena nibuting yanti tasma silang viso da ye sadhu 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 101 The right lodging for one of deluded temperament has a view and is not shut in where the four quarters are visible to him as he sits there as to the postures walking is right the right kind of object for his contemplation is not small that is to say the size of a winnowing basket or the size of a saucer for his mind becomes more confused in a confined space. So the right kind is an amply large casino. The rest is as stated for one of hating temperament. 
This is what suits one of deluded temperament. For one of faithful temperament, all the directions given from one of hating temperament are suitable. As to the object of his contemplation, one of the recollections is right as well. For one of intelligent temperament, there is nothing unsuitable as far as concerns the lodging and so on. For one of speculative temperament, an open lodging with a view, where gardens, groves, and ponds, pleasant prospects, panoramas of villages, towns and countryside, and the blue gleam of mountains are visible to him as he sits there is not right for that is a condition for the running hither and thither of applied thought. So he should live in a lodging such as a deep cavern, screened by woods, like the overhanging rock of the elephant's belly, Hati Kuchi Pabahara, or Mahinda's cave, also an ample-sized object of contemplation is not suitable for him, for if one like that is a condition for the running of the running hither and thither of applied thought. A small one is right. The rest is as stated for one of greedy temperament. This is what suits one of speculative temperament. These are the details with definition of the kind, source, recognition, and what is suitable as regards the various temperaments handed down here with the words that suits his own temperament. However, the meditation subject that is suitable to the temperament has not been cleared up in all its aspects yet. This will become clear automatically when those in the following list are treated in detail. Now, it was said above, and he should apprehend from among the forty meditation subjects one that suits his own temperament. Here, the exposition of the meditation subject should be first understood in these ten ways. 1. As to enumeration. 2. As to which bring only access and which absorption. 3. Add to the kinds of jhana. 4. As to surmounting. 5. As to extension and non-extension. 6. As to object. 7. As to plane. 8. As to apprehending. 9. As to condition. 10. As to su suitability to temperament. 1 of 4. Hearing. As to enumeration. It was said above. From among the 40 meditation subjects, herein the 40 meditation subjects are these. 10 kasinas, totalities, 10 kinds of foulness, 10 recollections, 4 divine abidings, 4 immaterial states, 1 perception, 1 defining. Herein, the 10 kasinas are these. Ad Kasina, Water Kasina, Fire Kasina, Air Kasina, Blue Kasina, Yellow Kasina, Red Kasina, White Kasina, Light Kasina, and Limited Space Kasina. The ten kinds of foulness are these the bloated, the livid, the festering, the cut up, the gnawed, the scattered, the hag and scattered, the bleeding, the worm infested, and a skeleton. The ten kinds of recollection are these. Recollection of the Buddha, the enlightened one. 
recollection of the Dhamma, the law, recollection of Sangha, the community, recollection of virtue, recollection of generosity, recollection of deities, recollection of mindfulness of death, mindfulness occupied with the body, mindfulness of breathing, and recollection of peace. The four divine abidings are these, loving kindness, compassion, gladness, and equanimity. The four immaterial states are these, the base consisting of boundless space, the base consisting of boundless consciousness, the base consisting of nothingness, and the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception. The one perception is the perception of repulsiveness in nutriment. The one defining is the defining of the four elements. This is how the exposition should be understood as to numeration. 106. As to which bring access only and which absorption. The eight recollections accepting mindfulness occupied with the body and mindfulness of breathing, the perception of repulsiveness in nutriment, and the defining of the four elements are the ten meditation subjects that bring access only. The others bring absorption. This is as to which bring access only and which absorption. As to the kind of jhana, among those that bring absorption, the ten kasinas together with mindfulness of breathing bring all four jhanas. The ten kinds of foulness together with mindfulness occupied with the body bring the first jhana. The first three divine abidings bring three jhanas. The fourth divine abiding and the four immaterial states bring the fourth jhana. This is as to the kind of jhana. Paragraph number 108. As to surmounting, there are two kinds of surmounting, that is to say, surmounting of factors and surmounting of object. Herein, there is surmounting of factors in the case of all meditation subjects that bring three and four jhanas because the second jhana, etc., have to be reached in those same objects by surmounting the jhana factors of applied thought and sustained thought, and so on. Likewise, in the case of the fourth divine abiding, for that has to be reached by surmounting joy in the same object as that of loving kindness, and so on. But in the case of the four immaterial states, there is surmounting of the object, for the base consisting of boundless space has to be reached by surmounting one or other of the first nine casinos. And the base consisting of boundless consciousness, etc., have respectively to be reached by surmounting space and so on. With the rest, there is no surmounting. This is as to surmounting. So this section is describing the attainment of these various uh, meditation objects. In order to attain some of them, you have to surmount. You have to go beyond something else. It's maybe a little confusing if you're not clear on what all of these 40 meditation subjects are, which it will go into, but it's just talking about what needs to be gone beyond in order to attain various. Again, this is not anything really related to our practice, so it's not all that interesting. 109. 5. As to extension and non-extension. Only the ten casinos among these forty meditation subjects need be extended. 
For it is within just so much space as one is intent upon with the casino that one can hear sounds with the divine ear element, see visible objects with the divine eye, and know the minds of other beings with the mind. Mindfulness occupied with the body and the ten kinds of foulness need not be extended. Why? Because they have a definite location and because there is no benefit in it. The definiteness of their location will become clear in explaining the method of development. If the latter are extended, it is only a quantity of corpses that is extended, and there is no benefit. And this is said in answer to the question of Sopaka. Perception of visible forms is quite clear, blessed one. Perception of bones is not clear. For here, the perception of visible forms is called quite clear, in the sense of extension of the sign, while the perception of bones is called not quite clear, in the sense of its non-extension. 111. But the words, I was intent upon this whole earth with the perception of a skeleton, are said of the manner of appearance to one who has acquired that perception. For just as in Damasoka's time, the Karawika bird uttered a sweet song when it saw its own reflection in the looking glass walls all around and perceived Karawikas in every direction. So the elder thought when he saw the sign appearing in all directions through his acquisition of the perception of a skeleton, that the whole earth was covered with bones. So this section about extension is referring to the fact that with some meditation objects, you make them larger. That it literally means extending them, making them larger. And that's only with the casino. So then he's discussing, and it's, this is very technical and, and again, not that interesting, but he's asking, well, couldn't you say some other things have to be extended? But no, really just the casinos. These the casinos are like an object, a color, and you have a disc and it has a... a um, as a limited size, but then you extend it, make it bigger, just literally make it bigger in your mind and bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can make it even infinite size. And this will, it'll go over this, he'll go over this later. It's just, if it's confusing what this means, this is just making, actually literally making things bigger in your mind. If that is so, then is what is called the measurelessness of the object of jhana produced on foulness contradicted? It is not contradicted, for one man apprehends the sign in a large bloated corpse or skeleton, another in a small one. In this way, the jhana of the one has a limited object, and of the other a measureless object. Or alternatively, with a measureless object, is said of it referring to one who extends it, seeing no disadvantage in doing so but it need not be extended because no benefit results. 113. The rest need not be extended likewise. Why? When a man extends the sign of in-breath and out-breath, only a quantity of wind is extended, and it has a definite location, the nose tip. So it need not be extended because of the disadvantage and because of the definiteness of the location. And the divine abidings have living beings as their object. When a man extends the sign of these, only the quantity of living beings would be extended, and there is no purpose in that. So that also need not be extended. When it is said, intent upon one quarter with his heart, endued with loving kindness, etc. That is said for the sake of comprehensive inclusion. For it is when a man develops it progressively by including living beings 
in one direction, by one house, by two houses, etc., that he is said to be intent upon one direction, not when he extends the sign. And there is no counterpart sign here that he might extend. Also, the state of having a limited or measureless object can be understood here according to the way of inclusion, too. 15. As regards the immaterial states as object, space need not be extended since it is the mere removal of the casino materiality. For that should be brought to mind only as the disappearance of the casino materiality. If he extends it, nothing further happens. And consciousness need not be extended since it is a state consisting in an individual essence. And it is not possible to extend a state consisting in an individual essence. The disappearance of consciousness need not be extended since it is mere non-existence of consciousness. And the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception as object need not be extended since it is since it too is a state consisting in an individual essence. So this word individual essence that's that's a makeshift translation it it means something more like that which has reality or that which has sorry that which has existence more literally that which has existence sabhava sabhava is it's a it is a, this is an important term and for vipassana because vipassana objects uh, have are sabhava ajahn tong would often use this it's a very common phrase that you'll hear in Vipassana, Sabhava Dhamma. When people ask him, what is it? What is this? What is that? He would say, it's a Sabhava Dhamma. It's impermanent suffering and non-self. And the lesson, the the, the meaning is, it's nothing. Or it's it's simply, an, it's simply a reality. So people would say, oh, I saw a, a light, or I saw, or I felt some special feeling. So when you when you call it a sabawa dhamma you're saying it's it's just a it is what it is it's just an experience it arises it ceases it's impermanent suffering and non-self so th the problem he says here is um you can't extend something that's real because you're not imagining it the, the extension the the increase the making bigger happens with imaginary things so if it's if you're l observing something real then uh, you can't extend it. But the, this word sabhava dhamma, it, it, it's a common word in the commentaries, r referring to things that actually exist. 116. The rest need not be extended because they have no sign, for it is the counterpart sign that would be extendable. And the object of the recollection of the Buddha, etc., is not a counterpart sign. Consequently, there is no need for extension there. This is as to extension and non-extension. So this, he's going to talk, this is something that people who are interested in these things, I think, may find controversial. I mean, those people who are interested in this type of meditation will find controversial because they're, they're criticized that they don't, they don't experience a patibhaganimita, but this is the orthodox description of samatha practice but ibaga is not exactly counterpoint uh, counterpart it's like the the um the the conceptual uh, the conceptual object or conceptual uh representation is the word i'm looking for the conceptual representation of say the earth so when you practice earth casino first you actually take a disc of clay or earth and you look at it and you say earth 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 you, you repeat that to yourself but eventually there arises in the mind you can close your eyes well in the beginning you can close your mind close your eyes and see the disc but eventually because that disc that you made the real disc is kind of imperfect 
it, it's hard to gain or it it's it's not conducive to uh trance and and uh, fixed and focused concentration so eventually the mind discards that imperfect real thing that you created for a conceptual uh, representation that, that's very similar but much more pure he's going to talk about this he'll explain what this is later but just if you're wondering what this is it's the it's what you get what, what comes arises in the mind based on the observation of something real and it's a conceptual thing like, like the idea of clay or the uh, representation of clay of earth 117 as to object of the 40 meditation subjects 22 have counterpart signs as object that is to say the 10 casinos the 10 kinds of foulness mindfulness of breathing and mindfulness occupied with the body the rest do not have counterpart signs as object then 12 have states consisting of individual essences as object. That is to say, 8 of the 10 recollections accept mindfulness of breathing and mindfulness of occupied with the body, the perception of repulsiveness and nutriment, the defining of the elements, the base consisting of boundless consciousness, and the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception. And the 22 have counterpart signs as object, that is to say, the 10 casinos, the 10 kinds of foulness, mindfulness of breathing, and mindfulness occupied with the body. While the remaining six have not so classifiable objects, then eight have mobile objects in the early stage through the counterpart is stationary. That is to say, the festering, the bleeding, the warm infested, mindfulness of breathing, the water casino, the fire casino, the air casino, and in the case of the light casino, the object consisting of a circle of sunlight etc. The rest have immobile objects. This is as to object. As to plane. Here, the twelve, namely, the ten kinds of foulness, mindfulness occupied with the body, and perception of repulsiveness and nutriment, do not occur among the deities. These twelve and mindfulness of breathing do not occur in the Brahma world. But none except the four immaterial states occur in the immaterial becoming. All occur among human beings. This is as to plain. 119. As to apprehending, your the exposition should be understood according to the seen, the touched, and the heard. Herein, these 19, that is to say, 9 casinas omitting the air casina, and the 10 kinds of foulness, must be apprehended by the seen. The meaning is that in the early stage, their sign must be apprehended by constantly looking with the eye. In the case of mindfulness occupied with the body, the five parts ending with skin must be apprehended by the seen, and the rest by the herd. So its object must be apprehended by the seen and the herd. Mindfulness of breathing must be apprehended by the touched. The air casino by the seen and the touched, the remaining 18 by the herd. The divine abiding by equanimity and the four immaterial states are not apprehended by a beginner, but the remaining 35 are. This is as to apprehending. 
So mindfulness occupied by, with the body is not mindfulness of the body as as you read about in the Satipatthana Sutta or not, not all of it. It's uh, the 32 parts of the body. So the first five, what he mentions here is is that the the first five only are visible. So why why he makes that distinction is because out of the 32, only the first five are external and the rest are internal. That's why you can't take them as an object by looking at them. But the other the other five, the first five you can. It's the hair on the head, the hair on the body, nails, teeth, and skin. I guess, how do you look at your teeth? I guess in a mirror, I don't know. No, someone else's teeth, maybe. 120. As to condition of these meditation subjects, nine casinas, omitting the space casina, are conditions for the immaterial states. The ten casinas are conditions for the kinds of direct knowledge. Three divine abidings are conditions for the fourth divine abiding. Each lower immaterial state is a condition for each higher one. The base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception is a condition for the attainment of cessation. All are conditions for living in bliss, for insight, and for the fortunate kinds of becoming. This is as to condition. A direct knowledge uh, refers to the special powers that we'll read about near the end of this section. The sort of seeing things far away, hearing things far away. And so the ten casinas are are the orthodox method of attaining all of those. You'll, you'll see about how you use the casinas a little bit. I'm not sure how much detail he goes into about how... I think so, yeah. He talks about how the casinas... Like, when it comes to reading someone's mind, knowing what someone else is feeling or thinking, it's interesting how he describes that, the, the method of cultivating that, using the casinas. As to suitability to temperament... Here the exposition should be understood according to what is suitable to the temperaments. That is to say, first, the ten kinds of foulness and mindfulness occupied with the body are eleven meditation subjects suitable for one of greedy temperament. The four divine abidings and the four color casinas are eight suitable for one of hating temperament. Mindfulness of breathing is the one recollection as a meditation subject suitable for one of deluded temperament and for one of speculative temperament. The first six recollections are suitable for one of faithful temperament, mindfulness of death, the recollection of peace, the defining of the four elements, and the perception of repulsiveness and nutriment are suitable for one of intelligent temperament. The remaining casinas and immaterial states are suitable for all kinds of temperament. And any one of the casinas should be limited for one of speculative temperament and measureless for one of deluded temperament. This is how the exposition should be understood here as to suitability to temperament. All this has been stated in the form of direct opposition and complete suitability. But there is actually no profitable development that does not suppress greed, etc., and help faith, and so on. And this is said in the Meghya Sutta. One should, in addition, develop these four things. Foulness should be developed for the purpose of abandoning greed, lust, Loving kindness should be developed for the purpose of abandoning ill will. Mindfulness of breathing should be developed for the purpose of cutting off applied thought. Perception of impermanence should be cultivated for the purpose of eliminating the conceit I am. Also in the Rahula Sutta, in the passage beginning, 
Develop loving kindness, Rahula. Seven meditation subjects are given for a single temperament. So instead of insisting on the mere letter, the intention should be sought in each instance. This is the explanatory exposition of the meditation subject referred to by the words he should apprehend one meditation subject. 123. Now the words and he should apprehend are illustrated as follows. After approaching the good friend of the kind described in the explanation of the words, then approach the good friend, the giver of a meditation subject. The meditator should dedicate himself to the blessed one, the enlightened one, or to a teacher, and he should ask for the meditation subject with a sincere inclination of the heart and sincere resolution. Herein, he should dedicate himself to the blessed one, the enlightened one, in this way. Blessed one, I relinquish this my person to you, for without having thus dedicated himself. When living in a remote abode, he might be unable to stand first if a frightening object made its appearance. And he might return to a village abroad, become associated with laymen, take up improper search, and come to ruin. But when he has dedicated himself, in this way no fear arises in him, if a frightening object makes its appearance. In fact, only joy arises in him as he reflects. Have you not wisely already dedicated yourself to the enlightened one? So this is the first thing we say in the requesting of the meditation subject in the opening ceremony. Imahang bhagava atapawang tumhakang parijachami. This is uh, taken directly from the Visuddhi Magga. It's uh, we still do that to this day. I never knew in, when when we first did it, I didn't know that it was from the Visuddhimagga, but we talked earlier about some of the things that you should do before meditating. You mentioned some others earlier, and those are also incorporated, I think I mentioned, are also incorporated into the opening ceremony. But the first thing you say is, I relinquish myself to you. You give up your being. You give it as a possession of the Buddha, a belonging of the Buddha. And then you do the same with the teacher. Imahang bante atabhavang. We, we switch that. It's not bante. We say imahang acharya atabhavang tumhakang paricha jami. Give yourself up to the teacher. When 25, suppose a man had a fine piece of cassie cloth he would feel grief if it were eaten by rats or moths, but if he gave it to a bhikkhu needing robes, he would feel only joy if he saw the bhikkhu tearing it up to make his patched cloak. And so it is with this. When he dedicates himself to a teacher, he should say, I relinquish this by person to you, venerable sir. For one who has not dedicated his person thus becomes unresponsive to correction, hard to speak to, and unamenable to advice, or he goes where he likes without asking the teacher. Consequently, the teacher does not help him with either material things or the Dhamma, and he does not train him in the cryptic books. Failing to get these two kinds of help, he finds no footing in the dispensation, and he soon comes down to misconducting himself or to the lay state. 
but if he has dedicated his person, he is not unresponsive to correction, does not go about as he likes, is easy to speak to, and lives only in dependence on the teacher. He gets the twofold help from the teacher and attains growth, increase, and fulfillment in the dispensation. Like the elder Kula Pindapadika, Tisa's pupils. It's a great passage. I mean, as a teacher, I appreciate it. It's the kind of thing you want to put in the, an introductory guide for new meditators to explain the importance of respect and dedication. Uh, number 125, if it's not clear, it's the idea is that um, without dedicating yourself to the Buddha especially, you uh, you're going to be concerned about what happens to you. You're going to be concerned if you get hurt or if you get sick or even if you get tired. You're going to be concerned about uh, your physical health, your mental health, and you're not going to be brave enough to challenge yourself. But when you're giving yourself over to the Buddha, there's a you have a, you have a different state of mind, and you you figure. Uh, you're you're willing. Some people are even willing to give up their own life, not not give it up for someone else for the Buddha, but to dedicate it to the practice. Because it's like we say in English, you feel like you're in good hands. So a person will have much more confidence and willingness to challenge themselves and to endure hardship and difficulty and suffering if they have the idea in their mind that they are a meditator, that they are a student of the Buddha. 127. Three bhikkhus, it seems. One of them said, Venerable sir, I'm ready to fall from a cliff, the height of 100 men, if it is said to be to your advantage. The second said, Venerable sir, I am ready to grind away this body from the hills up without reminder on a flat stone if it is said to be to your advantage. The, the third said, Venerable sir, I am ready to die by stopping breathing if it is said to be to your advantage. Observing, these bhikkhus are certainly capable of progress. The elder expounded a meditation subject to them. Following his advice, the three attained arahanship. This is the benefit in self-dedication. Hence, it was said above, dedicating himself to the Blessed One, the Enlightened One, or to a teacher. So advantage is not really the right word, but I guess it's the sense. Um, I mean, you could interpret this just as meaning if it was what you wanted me to do, if if it was um, to, to your purpose, in other words, to the purpose that you push me towards. Atta is the word. But tumha kang, your atta, your meaning, your purpose. It was to your benefit. It can also be, but I, I mean, it doesn't really speak to the relationship. Like, why are they concerned with their teacher's benefit? Why would you kill yourself for someone else's benefit? But the word atta can be interpreted different ways. So it may very well mean to your purpose, to to the purpose of the lesson, or the purpose that you have in mind when you teach. If the meaning, of, if your meaning when you teach me is that I should do this, I'll do it. Yeah, it could just be a roundabout way of saying, if you tell me to do it, I'll do it. A bit extreme and certainly not necessary. You don't have to go to that extreme, but still impressive. This reminds me of the teacher of Angulimala, Ahinsaka. He asked Ahinsaka to kill a thousand men. And of, uh, and garland of fingers. And, uh, That's a good he, point. Uh, if you're going to do this, you better be pretty sure that the teacher is 
teaching something good. Uh, normally we get people who are iffy on whether they... Well, we get a range of people. Like here at Wat Lampung, we get a lot of people who are in off the streets and start out with very little confidence and certainty, with no familiarity. I had one meditator say he didn't want to talk to me because he said, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know who you are. But I think I had rubbed him the wrong way already. But his words were, I don't even know you. So he didn't want to tell me anything about his practice. And then we get people telling the meditators that, oh, there's there's some crazy stuff like some somebody apparently telling the meditators not to listen to me and that sort of thing. It's a bit different here, certainly. Uh, which is why we've set things up differently when we when we've had our own center we have people i mean it's not why but but it's a part of the reason why we have people do the at home course first we want you to be ready for the intensive practice i mean it's such a waste of everyone's time if you're spending all all your time wondering whether you should be there and wondering what you're doing and just trying to figure out what you're doing so having done the at home course there's a much greater level of certainty, confidence, and familiarity, so you know what you're getting yourself into, and people who come are respectful and appreciative, and those who aren't would just not come, those who are, who don't have that level of confidence and conviction and enthusiasm would, of course, not come. They, they would after doing the at home course they would probably wouldn't finish the at home course bante you may have already explained 107 but is abs absorption referring to the jhana uh, well absorption does yes refer to the jhana absorption is not a literal translation apana that would be probably the word apana means attainment so what do meditators absorb they don't absorb, they become the absorbed. It means they, their mind is absorbed. It's a figure of speech. It's not really clear, but the meaning is the mind gets becomes fixed on the object. Okay, thank you. Is it possible to attain higher level of jhana without attaining the lower levels? Or are they conditional to attain the higher levels? Um... Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I mean, they they describe it as surmounting one after the other. I mean, even the Buddha described it, but I'm not. No, it's not. It's not necessary. You can skip jhanas, for sure. So you must be able to go directly to one of the higher ones. He'll talk about later about skipping them. I think, if I'm not mistaking. Thank you, Bhante. So, oh, if no questions, then. Have a good week, everyone. Sad. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you all. Uh,